good. He's been present in this connection of council, amen. He's made himself known. His spirit has been ever present. And we are grateful to God. We are grateful to God. The psalmist declared, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I like this part where it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Can we bless his name tonight? Can we bless his name tonight? For he is good and his mercy endure forever. Come on, don't pity that God. Let's bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Most precious and all wise God. Here your children of Zion have come once again that we might enter into this tabernacle and give your name the praise. Father God, we're asking in the name of Jesus that you would saturate the atmosphere so much so, God, that your spirit runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. I pray, God, that you would saturate the atmosphere so much so that the choir will sing like they've never sung before, that the preacher would preach like he's never sung before, pray, preached before. I pray, God, that you would be in your people, God, that we would praise you like we've never praised before, God. Have your will, have your way. In this place, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. On tonight, we are so blessed to have others that are participating in this worship experience. Amen. A worship experience. Amen. But well, we are all participating. Amen. But on tonight, we have the pastor of the New Bethel AME Zion Church located in the Hendersonville District, where we are live in HD, the Blue Ridge Conference. We have the pastor of New Bethel, the Reverend Keith Lipsy, that shall come before us with our scripture on tonight. And then we will be taken to the throne of grace by none other than the pastor of the Mount Pisgah AME Zion Church, Rockingham District, in the West Central Conference, Reverend Lloyd Nivens IV. Amen? Amen. Immediately after the two of them come, then we are going to be favored by the voices of the Trinity Ensemble. Can I tell you now that they're not singing for our pleasure. They're just leading us in worship. Amen. As we go up higher and higher in Christ Jesus. Thank you, President Nelda. At this time, we, our scripture lesson is coming from 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 5. 2 Kings chapter number 5. And when you have it, let it be known so by simply just saying amen. Amen. The king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. At this time, Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife, as a maid. One day, the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. Go and visit the prophet the king of Aram told him. I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. 
So Naaman started out carrying as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. A letter to the king of Israel said, With this letter I present my servant Naaman. I want to heal him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, Am I God that I can give life and take it away? Why is this man asking me to heal someone with leprosy? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this message to him. Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me, and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away and thought he would certainly come out to meet me. Hmm, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpa better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. But hmm, his officers tried to reason with him, and he said, If the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, Go and wash and be cured. But it didn't stop there. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped seven times as the man of God had instructed him and <laughs> his skin became as healthy as the skin huh, of a young child. And he was heal the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you. Because God, truly, you have brought us from a mighty long way. God, we thank you on tonight for this Connection of Council meeting. Oh God, you've taken us through valleys and you're taking us over mountains. God, we've heard reports, Father. But now, God, we come to rejoice, God. So, Father, I ask that you would have your way in this place on tonight. Oh God, I ask that you would move from heart to heart and from mind to mind. Oh Lord, whatever your people may stand in the need of God, I ask that you do it right now in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you in advance, God, because we know that your spirit shall move in this place. So, God, our prayer on tonight is spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon this tabernacle. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon the Embassy Suites Hotel. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon Zion. So that God, when we leave this place, we can leave declaring that surely we've been in the presence of the Lord. So God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch our bishops right now in the name of Jesus. Touch our missionary supervisors right now in the name of Jesus. Touch our general officers right now in the name of Jesus. Touch the clergy and the lay right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you, God, to create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit on tonight. God, I ask that you would pour out your blessings upon your people on tonight. So God, whatever may be in the way of us receiving your word, whatever may be in the way of us hearing your voice, whatever may be in the way of us worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Father, I ask that you move it right now in the name of Jesus. For we are your people. We are your church. And we're God, we're going to thank you in advance for what you're going to do on tonight. God, we're going to lift you up in advance uh, for what you're going to do on tonight. Uh, so God, have your way in this place. God, have your way in this place. So that when we leave this place, we'll leave better than when we came. In Jesus' name, amen.
it is now my task that I might present the one that has been my presiding elder twice. I declare that where there's, there's smoke, there's fire. So the presiding elder of the North Charlotte, of the Charlotte District, the Charlotte District of Western North Carolina Conference shall now come before us for our introduction. It is my privilege to present to you the 97th Bishop in the Alliance of Session, the President of the Board of Bishops. May we receive him by standing, Bishop Dennis D. Proctor. Thank you very kindly. You may be seated. When I get a little tired, you don't know what's going to happen. To all of our distinguished, notable, and necessary clerics, episcopates, lay leadership, to each of you, we thank God for you. And we're grateful that we have had such a successful time together. Now, my task, as you see, I had to find out again, is to lift the offering, to have us to participate in the process of sowing and reaping. It is necessary that we have a good posture internally how we would give and how we would bring to the Lord. And so tonight, I'm asking that our finance team, we've kind of got a hodgepodge of finance masters, but our finance team would come and we would prepare ourselves to receive uh, the offering. There is uh, Dr. Tillich, he would continue with this appeal. This is his job. I did it long enough. Dr. Thompson did it long enough, and now we turn it over to another young man. Would you come and make this appeal? Give me all your money. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Let, let the people of God say amen. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord once again. To be in the presence of the Lord. And as uh, Bishop uh, has instructed, it's time for us uh, to give. I'm going to ask that members of the finance committee will come uh, forward, if you will. Uh, we're going to give uh, just as we did on last night. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, I believe uh, the outer sections came forward first by way of the middle aisle and returned uh, to the outer aisles, um, after which the, the inner sections uh, came forward and we were directed uh, by the ushers. Uh, we will certainly do uh, the same uh, on tonight. Amen. Tonight, we're going to ask that each of us would be so generous to give an offering tonight of $50. $50 offering tonight, I believe that the tech team is prepared to put on the screen the ways to give those of us who are giving virtually. Many have already started to do that. Others who have not yet uh, it is on the screen now, uh, and please make your checks payable uh, to the Board of Bishops. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, I'm ready to give. All right, here we go. Come on, let's go.
I only have two. We just have two. Okay, three, four, okay. All right. I think we need a few more. Haven Anderson. All right. I think we're good. Even now, God, as we come to prepare to give, we're certainly mindful of the many blessings you continue to bestow upon each of us. And we certainly know the responsibilities that must be met in the life of our church. And God, we're ready now to do thy bidding this night. Bless now gift and giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to ask that the outer sections would stand. Ushers, if you would give us direction. Thank you so very kindly. Say God is coming through. 
Whatever you need from the Lord, say God is coming through. Whatever you need from the Lord, say God is coming through. Whatever you need from the Lord, say God is coming through. This tech team, now the reason they need to be applauded as we're doing is because their chieftain, the point guard, DK, who would be here, is at home watching, quarantined with family and COVID, and so he's not here, but they stepped up. Next man, next woman up, they stepped up, and we have not felt any glitches. And we just wanted to applaud each of you. Would you just raise your hand so that we, amen. We are blessed to have you indeed, each of you. Your contribution is as important as what happens here in the pulpit. If you mess that up, it messes this up. It messes them up. So thank you for being faithful to the challenge that God has given you using the talent that he has given you. I present to you now the bishop of this area who has distinguished himself as being a host with great hospitality, love, and decorum. He is the 96th bishop in the line of succession of all of those bishops in the AME Zion Church. Would you stand and receive now the right Reverend Darrell Brewster Starnes. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I can't do like Bishop Proctor and let y'all just wait. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bishop Proctor, to Bishop Proctor, our president, and Bishop Monroe, our senior bishop, the board of bishops, and the Zion family. Aren't we excited when it pleases God to manifest his presence in our midst? Can we thank God for how his Holy Spirit has been in our midst in such a wonderful way. And we're so grateful for this music ministry from 
the Trinity Amy Zion Church. Thank you, musicians and choir members and director. It is such a joy. And might I thank God for the leadership of our president of the Board of Bishops. Didn't it feel good this afternoon to say, I have some free time. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Did that feel good? Let's thank God for his leadership. Thank you. It is my privilege <clears throat> to present the preacher for this hour. And I try to seek the Lord in guiding me on how I should introduce the preacher. And the Lord impressed upon me that sometimes we know where a person is, but we may not fully appreciate their journey there. God's messenger, the Reverend Dr. Darren Hernandez Mitchell, was born and raised in Tampa, Florida. He was nurtured in the Hood Temple Amy Zion Church in Tampa and accepted the call to the ministry at age 15, preached his trial sermon at age 16. So he's been preaching the gospel for 33 years. He was ordained a deacon in the South Florida Conference at age 19, and an elder in that same conference at age 21. He holds the Bachelor of Arts degree in religion, philosophy, liberal studies from Bethune Cookman College in Daytona Beach, Florida. The Master of Divinity degree from our own Hood Theological Seminary in Salisbury, North Carolina. And the Doctor of Ministry degree with an emphasis in liturgy and the black church from Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology on the campus of Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. He's also received training and certification in the pastoral care specialist program at the Presbyterian Hospital in Charlotte. The Institute for Church Administration and Management at the ITC, that's the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And the North Carolina Rural Leadership Development Institute in Raleigh, North Carolina. He has served the following congregations, New Zion, Amy Zion Church, Newport, hold your hand over your heart, Tennessee. <laughs> that church is in the Blue Ridge Conference. Harris Chapel, Amy Zion Church, Canton, North Carolina, also in the Blue Ridge Conference. Smithville, Amy Zion Church, Sherall, South Carolina. Carolina in the PD Conference, Foundation Amy Zion Church, Rock Hill, South Carolina, South Carolina Conference, St. James Amy Zion Church, Goldsboro, North Carolina, Cape Fear Conference, the first Amy Zion Church, Brooklyn, New York, New York Conference. And presently, 
the Trinity, Amy Zion Church, Greensboro, North Carolina, West Central North Carolina Conference. He's a teacher. He served as adjunct professor in religion at Mount Olive College in Mount Olive, North Carolina, teaching Old Testament, New Testament, and Hebrew prophets. Adjunct professor at the North Carolina Wesleyan College in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, teaching Christian ethics and introduction to religion. Adjunct professor at United Christian College in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Everywhere he's gone, he's been teaching. Old Testament and church history. Adjunct professor at New Brunswick Theological Seminary. And he is presently serves as the adjunct professor of pastoral theology at our own Hood Theological Seminary in Salisbury. And professor of religion at Greensboro College in Greensboro. He is married to the Reverend Lorraine Lynn Kennedy Mitchell. Amen. Amen. And they are the proud parents of a young adult son, Kalen, who is also a preacher of the gospel. Are we not excited that God's messenger for this night is none other than the Reverend Dr. Darren H. Mitchell. If the people pray, the preacher will preach. And I want you to know something. There's a preacher in the house. There's a preacher in the house. After this choir, this, um, what is it? This ensemble. The ensemble blesses us and blesses God with another selection. The next voice we shall hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Mitchell. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our Keeper. Let us pray. Who am I? What way? To this, your people every day. When I myself am prone to go astray. But Lord, if thy preacher I must be, let this waiting people clearly see your preacher leaning hard on thee. Thank you for putting treasure in trash. Let the treasure come out hold back anything trashy. Let your glory be seen. Let your presence be felt. Let your word be heard. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlightened with celestial fire. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlightened with celestial fire. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlightened with celestial fire. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Most Reverend Bishops of the Church, President of the Board of Bishops, Bishop Dennis Vernon Proctor, Senior Bishop of our Church, Bishop Kenneth Monroe, to the members of the Executive Board of the Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society, to connectional officers, past and present, to the various departments of our church, to clergy of every rank and file, to the laity of the church, who in the words of the sainted Bishop James E. McCoy, pay the bills. To all of you, the people of God, members of the Embassy of Heaven in hostile territory, I greet you in the matchless magnificent, magnanimous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm thankful, I think, for my bishop placing on my shoulders this blessed burden. I'm grateful to him and to his helper suitable, Sister Camille Cullum Starn thankful to God for the opportunity that God has blessed me to share in this meaningful connectional council. Thankful that God saw a little snotty-nosed boy from East Tampa and said, I can use him. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to stand here tonight. It's been a long week, hasn't it? And I believe brevity is in order, is it not? You can say amen. I'm thankful to my beautiful wife and to my son in whom I'm well pleased. 
It's preaching time. Thank you to the liturgists and to the worship mates who shared with us and for those powerful, rhapsodic, melodic voices, anointed voices from the Trinity AME Zion Church and the music ministry. God bless you. And to members of the finest church this side of heaven, my presiding elder and his good wife who are members of the church, I want all the members of Trinity Church to stand. Amen. There are those who are watching. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence tonight. To all who may be watching, God bless you. 2 Kings chapter 5 has been effectively read. I mean effectively read. <laughs> really isn't much to say after the effective reading of the scripture. I am a professor of preaching at Hood Seminary and I also teach worship and I say you ought to read the scripture in such a way that you give preachers a time trying to find a nuance or some kind of glance into scripture, you ought to read it in such a way to really make the preacher nervous, and this preacher has done that tonight. <laughs> Might I read it tonight from the Eugene Peterson paraphrase of the Hebrew Masoretic text. I just want to read verses 9 through 13. So Naaman with his horses and chariots arrived in style and stopped at Elisha's door. Elisha sent a secret, a servant rather, to meet him with this message. Go to the river Jordan and immerse yourself seven times. Your skin will be healed and you'll be as good as new. Naaman lost his temper. He spun around saying, I thought he'd personally come out and meet me. Call on the name of God. Wave his hand over the diseased spot and get rid of the disease. The Damascus rivers, Abana and Farpa, are cleaner by far than any of these rivers in Israel. Why not bathe in them? I'd at least get clean. He stomped off mad as a hornet. Here's a text. But his servants caught up with him and said, Father, if the prophet had asked you to do something hard and heroic, wouldn't you have done it? So why not this simple wash and be clean? That's enough. As I humbly enter into this homiletical triumvirate that has been initiated by Bishop Starnes, who called us to holiness, and Bishop Thompson last night, who called us to hope, I pray that God can now help us experience healing. And I want to talk from this thought as the spirit shall give unction and utterance. I want to talk from this thought. Try easy. Try easy. Try easy. When drawing into the solemnity of preparation and seeking space for dialogue with the inner sanctum of my contemplative reflection with the eternal, I was drawn afresh to the words I have internalized from the sainted mystic Dr. Howard Washington Thurman. One of my favorite sermons is Charting Your Inward Sea. He begins with this poignant, pregnant assertion. There is in every person an inward sea, and on that sea there is an island, and on that island there is an altar, 
And standing guard at that altar is an angel with the flaming sword. And nothing can get past that angel to be placed on your altar unless it has the mark of your inner authority upon its brow. This becomes, he says, your crucial link to the eternal. He goes on to ask a poignant question. How does one chart one inward sea? And note, he's not asking this question as an expert in spiritual things uh, because Thurman is not as presumptuous as we are in our religious culture and parlance as we flaunt our spiritual lives before those we think are subordinate to our religiosity. He recognizes that it's not how you look, it's how you live. It's not your mannerisms, it's mastering your own soul. It's not your behavioral peculiarities, it's what you believe that anchors your behavior. Thurman raises this question as a fellow traveler, a fellow pilgrim struggler, trying to lay claim to that which is genuine and authentic beyond the accidents and incidents of our human sojourn. Put plainly, friends, how do you navigate the space called you? Dr. Thurman's words have written on my heart as I listen to the th stirrings of my spirit regarding the moment we're living out in real time. I've wrestled with this word since receiving the summons from my bishop and I tried to shake it off and find something more appealing to preach. But with all the myriad of issues that are placed before us, surely a more palatable subject could be lifted in this sermonic moment. But the Lord would not let me rest on what I wanted to commandeer as sermon and text. And beloved, I contend that with the external pressures crashing in upon this historic moment, with the boiling emotions and passions surging into this socio-cultural, political cauldron, with the restless sea that is tossing and throwing us like debris, we need a firm anchoring that is not based nor built on emotion or ego. We need a firmly anchored spiritual guiding and grounding that will guide and guard us against our preoccupations with our own hidden agendas and narrow biases. And while I believe that God is at work amidst this chaotic moment, I also believe that God is calling us for us to go deeper than the surface issues that often keep us from asking the deeper questions and probing the inner tension and turmoil that is manifested in the clamor of this brewing pressure. We have before us, friends, a wonderful opportunity to make significant systemic transformation. And I want to invite us tonight to join in doing the inner work that will foster lasting change. I sense we are being processed into what is divinely orchestrated. And may we be sensitive to the stirrings of providence and prepare for the long march ahead. Let's be truthful, friends. Gone are the days when churches and preachers can dismiss and over-spiritualize the times in which we traffic. You can't gloss over this peril. You can't gloss over this pain manifested by the ignorance and denial of a deluded social order that will not embrace critical race theory but will rest with, will find themselves connected to the ratchet replacement theory with the blessings of the so-called christian church gone are times when we could wink at wickedness and not offer a witness and a word that prepares and equips us for the long road ahead. We have a crisis afoot. And machinated movements, sacrinated, syrupy, sugar-coated sermonizing that promises victory for every pain, problem, and predicament will not suffice. We have a long haul before us and life coaching disguised as gospel from grinning and skinning preachers will not serve this present age. 
We need a justice homiletic that will call out the hypocrisy, confront the duplicity, challenge the supremacists, expose the deception, uncover the lies, reveal the dishonesty, speak truth to power, speak life to the powerless, comfort the afflicted, and afflict the comfortable. Ours is a work that our souls must do. You can't do it if you allow the abridged, asinine sound bites and idiotic idiosyncrasies. We need courageous Christians because without question, the culture will challenge you on every hand. The systems will try you. The establishment will harass you. The principalities will perplex you. The structures will strangle you. The climate will stifle you. The institution will insult you. The religious order will reject you. The society will discard you. Friends will forsake you. Family will disown you. Haters will hinder you. Critics will snap and sting. And the empire will profile you. But greater is he that's in you than they who may be after you. The Lord, I wish I had help. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of our lives. Of whom shall we? I wish I had some folk in the Freedom Church that can testify. When the enemies, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Y'all sit down. We just talking. We just talking. The record tonight, we just talking. The record that encases our narrative for this discourse tonight speaks of a man who should be on the cover of time. Known for his success. Favor at the king's palace. Renowned figure. Military commander who marched Bishop Proctor triumphantly many times in the Syrian cities and had experienced victory after victory. Bishop Frederick Naaman was a champion among his people, an honorable human specimen of integrity. Bishop Crenshaw, he was the quintessence of military virtuosity, the textbook reference for competent soldiery. Bishop Moore, there is a coordinating conjunction Conjunction, junction. I'm going to tell you the function. There is a coordinating conjunction that equalizes Naaman and every Naaman in this house tonight. There is a coordinating conjunction that levels the playing field no matter what color your shirt is. No matter what your title might be, this text says, Bishop Dogby, he was a mighty man. But, but, mighty man, Bishop Monroe, but, and that says no matter what your accomplishments is and may be, there is a nagging portion this Bishop League that speaks volumes about our need for grace. There is a revelation, DB, in the word but. There's a ministry in the word but. He said I can compose an entire sermon on the word but. I wish I had some Gen Xers, some, some 1980s folk who went to HBCUs and went to the party on Friday night because all of us in here are doing the but. I got a sermon tonight because all of us are doing the but. You saved, but. You sanctified, but. You redeemed, you got it. Your Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, speaking in tongues, anointed, singing, shouting, eldering, bishoping, pastoring. I got a butt, you got a butt, all of God's children got a butt. So come on, let's do the butt tonight because all of us got one and we brought our butt to church tonight. That which was wrong with us came with us 
when we walked in this house tonight. And God put this story, Monty, in the text, in the canon, to shock the African Edenic Yahwistic code of ancient Israel. He shocks them. Because if Naaman can get a healing, and Naaman didn't even believe in Yahweh. There isn't much difference, y'all, between Naaman's butt and our butt. There's some poignant principles, and I want to share them. Can we unearth them? I'll be out your way in a few more minutes. Healing of Naaman comes, watch it, from unexpected places. It begins with the recommendation from a young servant girl who had been taken captive. What if she had remained silent? What if nobody had listened? Who are the unexpected voices we ignore? Who are the voices that we overlook because of where they sit and how they look and what they don't have? based on our qualification who are the unexpected voices that we don't pay attention to what sister have we overlooked because of how she looks and how she moves what unexpected voice through some brother whom we have relegated to the margins of our church and society because they don't look like us and sound like us Naaman's boss, the king of Syria, thought that he could work this thing out, Bishop Proctor, that the king of Israel had power over the prophet. And so he tried to work out the healing politically. And be careful how people try to traffic in spiritual matters using political means. The king thought he could muscle his way into manifestation. King of Syria was trying to work a deal with Israel. And the king of Israel said, wait a minute. This is a pretext for war. And so distraught was he, friends, that he stripped his clothes and had a hissy fit. And Reverend Elisha found out about the king having a hissy fit about the letter he received and told the king, break yourself, fool. Send the brother to me. And he going to learn today. Thank you, Cat Williams, that there is a prophet in Israel. I heard Dr. Charles Booth of Blessed Memory say some years ago that prophets and kings are not the same. Kings are statesmen. But the prophet is a man and woman of God. The king is a political instrument. But the, pre the prophet, the preacher, has a spiritual closet. The king commands marching armies. And the prophet can call on angels. The king has a scepter of power in his hand. And the prophet has a trumpet down in his or her soul. We don't need preachers who will be cute when it comes to destiny. We need prophets who will not be co-opted by empire. We need prophets who will cry aloud and, and spare not. And God told me to ask you, where are our prophets who are not ashamed to stand up and declare, for God I live and for God I'll die. We don't need prophets giving forecasts about your blessing coming in three days. We need prophets who will be, who will have the audacity to say, you got three days to get yourself together and clean up your life. <laughs> Naaman comes to the, to the prophet's parsonage in grand fashion, surrounded by chariots and horses and an entourage. He was missing one thing. He was missing humility to receive help that money could not provide. He goes out saying, I'm better than this. He wanted Elisha to come out. He wanted the healing to be personal. He even preferred the rivers from his own country. Naaman was mad. His sense of protocol was offended. He was about to miss the blessing of his life because he allowed his position to retard his purpose. But don't look at me in that tone of voice. He gave orders, but what he needed in this text 
was to receive orders and to respond in obedience. I don't know about you, but come on, let's be honest and keep it 100. I understand Naaman's issue. I understand what it means to nurse a bruised ego. Imagine a great man with an issue. Imagine having a painful, socially isolating disease. Imagine the shock and the outrage he feels when he shows up at the Rebbe's house and Rebbe doesn't even come out to give him preferential treatment. Has silver and gold and festal garments only to have this preacher say, go down to that muddy river, take off your clothes, and bathe. Naaman lost his temper, the text says. And like Naaman, I'm stopped short by the servant's question too. If the prophet had commanded something difficult, would you have not done it? These servants clearly know their master well. He would have done it because it was hard. But why not try easy? They know what he wants. They know he wants to earn this healing. They know that he holds his own courage and fortitude and skill in high regard. But why not try easy? Isn't it easy just to go and do what Rem says? But here's the big surprise tonight. And it might not be a shock to some of us, but all of us feel that doing the easy thing doesn't feel easy at all. Because easy offends our sensibilities. It disarms us. It challenges us. It humbles us. It leaves us feeling unsophisticated. It leaves us feeling silly and vulnerable. Come on, help me. After all, we believe in God, don't we? And we expect God to do the miraculous. But sometimes, Bishop Moore, God will embed the profundity in the simplicity and invite you and I to come out of our cloistered confines and take off our mask, not in here, and try easy. want miracles that dazzle, impress, amaze, stupefy, and mystify. Because for us, divine encounters make us look good. Uh, of course, we want to venerate those things that make us look holy and super saved and super spiritual. But can I bless your Easter basket and your grocery basket at the same time? Sparkle is not always where the spiritual lies. Sometimes God's works are manifested through easy. Come here, him right or help me. God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps on the sea and rides upon the storm. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him. I wish I had some Methodists in here. By his grace, behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to air and stand his work in vain. But God is his own interpreter and he will. Okay, you don't know that one. We are often tossed and driven on this restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests of succeed a bright sunshine. But in that land of perfect day when the mist have rolled away we will understand it behind the Y'all be seated. In the words of my native home folk, let me go on and cut across the field. Can you not see the humor in this text? Stubbs, Elisha gives a command. And what he simply tells Naaman is to take off your armor. All of you can't get this healing in your military apparel. You can't get this healing with your vestments that depict and portray your ecclesiastical order. 
You can't get this healing if you're still trying to smile and profile for Negroes you don't like and Negroes who don't like you. You can't get this healing if you came in here mad as hell because somebody's going to come in here mad as hell, leave mad as hell, die and go to hell and cause hell for everybody else. You can't get this healing. He says, I'm closing. You got to go all in. But before you go all in, you got to take it all off. Wash until your need to buy your miracle is no longer your preoccupation. Wash until you're not trying to demand your way into God's presence. Wash and take off your pretense. Wash and shake off unforgiveness. In other words, the text is telling us you got to try ease. And if you and I would be honest tonight, the reason why we have what we have is because God be, looked beyond our foolish pride and blessed our life. He says, strip it off. Get in the water. And just dip. Dip, baby, dip. He dip. Now I ain't closing. I know. He, he dip. One time. Dip. I wish somebody would help me dip. Dip. Three times. Dip. Four times. Dip. Five times. Dip. Six times. Dip. Seven times. And the old folks said I looked at my hand. And my hands look new. I looked at my feet. Oh, and they did too. I feel all right now. That was Jordan, Mr. President. That was Jordan. I'm cutting across the field. But you don't need a Jordan for this miracle. You don't need a Jordan for this miracle. What you need is the right name. I was visiting, sharing with the Western Episcopal District a couple of weeks ago where Bishop Thompson and Missionary supervisor for Lika doing an incredible job. And I went and I went to check in. And Matthew Pegue says, Come on, Doc, let's go to the hotel and, and check in. And I went to the desk and I said to the to the agent, to the clerk, I said, I'm checking in. And she says, Well, give me your name. And I said, My name is Darren Mitchell. She looked in the computer, she says, I don't see your name and unless I see your name I can't give you access I looked at Matt I said Matt what we gonna do what us gonna do I need to get in my room and get ready for the night he says well we got to find out whose name this room is in because that name will give you access to what you need I decided well let's find out whose name this room is in and Matt said, well, because we're in Sacramento, it got to be Brandon Fisher's name. And so I used Brandon's name. Where Brandon? I said, Brandon Fisher. And they looked in the computer and they said, now we see it. But it was under Brandon's name. And I said, well, give me the key. He says, well, you can have this key because you know the right name. I took the key got in my room, looked on the screen. You know how they put the name on the screen. And it didn't have Darren's name, but it had Brandon's name. And I said, well, since he put his name on the line, I'm gonna keep using his name because the only reason I'm in this room is because I know the right name. And so I said, well, I need to get my Wi-Fi connected. And I said, well, I got the number, and then I typed my name, and it kept kicking me out because I had the wrong name. But when I used Brandon's name, it let me in. It let me in through my iPad. It let me in through my cell phone. It let me in through my laptop. And so I decided, since this name got me in this
this room, I'm going to stay with that name because that name will open doors. That name will make way. That name will open doors. Have I got a witness? Goodbye, Zion. I'll see you when I see you. But can I close like a method back the custom? I hear the Savior say, My strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me, find all and all. Can I find two or three folk who can help me call that name? Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin has left, did leave a crimson stain, but he washed. I said I wasn't going to do this, but it's in my throat and in my soul. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then, where you go. Take the name of Jesus with you. Let it shield you from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name. Oh, you don't know that one? There is a name. I love to hear. I, 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 I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh! Oh! I said, oh! 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 How I love Jesus. Help me say it. Because he first Love me, try it, try it, try it.
let us come. This word that has reached and is reaching the depths of our hearts. Can we thank God for the messenger? Man, and who resisted the temptation to preach something that would tickle our ears. Aren't we glad we got the truth tonight? Because the truth is. The only way to be saved is to try easy. We can't 
earn it. We can't merit it. I'm talking about salvation now. All we can do is humble ourselves and receive it by faith. This message is one for our culture. Society, because when we think we've earned something, that's what makes us look down on other people. And God sent the preacher to tell us to get healing of soul and body. We've got to take off all of that. Let's thank God again for this word. And I just want to thank the members of the Piedmont Episcopal District that led us so wonderfully in the worship. The presiding elder, amen. <laughs> presiding elder, J. Ruth Davis. And Dr. Mitchell talked about Reverend Keith Lipsy and how he read it, how he read the scripture. <laughs> Then the Reverend Lloyd Nevins offered that prayer. So grateful for Elder Smoke, presiding Elder Smoke, presenting Bishop. And then Reverend Dr. Reginald Kidd giving the invitation. And can we thank God for the choir, the music ministry. So now let's receive again the president of the Board of Bishops, Bishop Denon, Dennis Vernon Proctor. I am not Bishop Proctor. Amen. We do have announcements that we'd like to share with you. The American Red Cross Blood Drives, Zion's Partners to Heal toward a season of Thanksgiving. 64 sites have been cited as potential volunteers sign up today, offering churches and districts uh, have been listed to uh, assist. Tonight, anyone who will sign up to be Ambassador to lead Zion toward 50 Thanksgiving. Sign up in the lobby tonight. The Christian Education Department Winter Meeting, December the 27th through the 30th, 2022, at the Marriott on the Magnificent Mile in Chicago, Illinois. Board of Bishops, International Ministers and Lay Association Annual Meeting, February the 14th through the 17th, 2023, Los Angeles Hyatt, Los Angeles, California. These are dates that you need to put on your calendars. Connectional Council and WH and OM Society, 30th Quadrennial Convention, July 18 through 21, and 22 through 28, 2023, at the Hilton Riverside Hotel, New Orleans, Louisiana. The 52nd General Conference, these are save the dates, July 24 through July 28, 2024, Sheraton Four Season, Joseph H. S. Corey Convention Center, Greensboro, Greensboro, North Carolina. Amen. Celebrate Harriet Tubman's 200th birthday, cupcakes 
to share as you leave the service tonight. Please govern yourself by these announcements. Thank you very kindly. Indeed, we do have the Harriet Cupcakes we want you to share. We've just come from celebrating her 200th birthday anniversary. And the city of Auburn, the state of New York, and so many of our Zionites were there to share in that time. We cannot forget Harriet. Everyone wants to claim Harriet, but Harriet belongs to us by her choosing, and we need to make sure that we keep that blessed name lifted. We are ready to go. Uh, bishops, we will not meet tonight. Everyone can scatter their separate ways. We have a new way of handling what we need to handle, and uh, we thank God for Bishop Bourne, the CVB, for having new ways to do old things, and we are appreciative thereof. I just received a text. Also, I see Bishop Crenshaw there smiling under that mask. He just got uh, that $176,000 for the roofing at the Lomax Hannon campus. And it came from Dr. Letitia Hill Gadet, our own philanthropist. Stand up, Dr. Gadet. Our own philanthropist. Her money did it. Not, not grant money. Her money. Hallelujah. You can have it, but if you don't give it, she did that and how blessed we are. I'm going to call on the senior to close us with the final benediction in this last time together. It's so significant. We're going our separate ways. Some we may not see again. And for me, final blessing is so sacred that we want to take time to pause and hear from the one who has been active now and still active the longest among us the right Reverend Kenneth Monroe may we bow our heads we thank you oh God found it necessary to stay with us these few days. We thank you, O oh God, that you found it necessary to speak to us. And now may the peace that you have sustained us. And the love you have given me embrace us. And the power you offer enable us now and forever. Amen.